Hey, welcome everyone. I have the privilege of uh, interviewing today with you, Dr. Karen Mullins. Now, Mike Reese here with Systemic Formulas. I'm just really anxious about what Dr. Karen has to offer for us in terms of protocols she's used specifically as it pertains to inflammatory bowel disease, as well as other related digestive issues. And she can delve into that. And, and just to give you some background on Dr. Karen Mullen's experience, she is a nationally certified doctor of oriental medicine. She's licensed as a primary healthcare provider in New Mexico, as well as a certified functional medicine practitioner. Her passion for assisting others in healing from digestive disorders stems from her own debilitating experiences with ulcerative colitis, which Dr. Karen, I'm assuming you can, you can share a little bit more about uh, your story and how that, how that came about and how you've been able to influence others. Through her extensive training, research, and clinical practice, she has developed a deep understanding of the root cause of disease, including genetics, environment, diet, and lifestyle that all contribute to IBD or inflammatory bowel disease. And what I especially liked, the more I've read about you, Dr. Karen, how you've been able to integrate Western biochemistry and tr traditional Chinese medicine because mm -hmm. of your experience in all of the above. In addition to that, Dr. Karen has written a book, a very influential book called Wake Up to the Truth Behind Crohn's Disease. And one of, the, one of the ways in which she has pioneered new roads in preventing IBDs, devastating conditions, and healing them. The book gives a, a better layman interpretation of inflammatory bowel disease to spread the awareness of cause and treatment. It goes way beyond just, just it being an autoimmune condition. As I understand it, uh, Dr. Karen has really pushed the envelope to help people uh, increase their awareness of what IBD is and how it can be helped. Maybe explain your story and how you were able to get through uh, inflammatory bowel disease at, at a personal level. Mm. Yeah, um, it, you know, it's been quite the journey. Um, I got diagnosed at 15, which is um, abnormally young to get diagnosed with um, IBD. The average age is 30. So, you know, here I was um, getting ready to go to prom and, um, you know, I'm sick, you know, just very sick. Um, so it started then and, um, uh, you know, of course they put me on Western, you know, drugs and I was on pharmaceuticals um, until I went to college um, and lost my health insurance, um, no longer on my, my parents, you know, my mother's plan. And so, uh, you know, I got very sick again, getting off the drugs. And so that, that um, started the next decade of, you know, on, off, on, off drugs, yo-yo, um, of all kinds of different things. Um, but it also at that time fuel, fueled my, my interest in natural medicine. Um, and I just had this, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it, I just very instinctually at a very young age uh, didn't feel like my, my illness was being caused by my immune system just attacking my body. I thought that there was just something else. I really had a feeling that there was some sort of infection going on, um, not able to understand or articulate that at such a young age, but I just felt like there was more to the story. Um, so, you know, by the time I was, you know, uh, in my early 20s, I was just reading as much as I could and, and starting to um, look into all kinds of different avenues of natural healing, um, which led me to graduate school for oriental medicine. Um, and I was a dance major in undergrad. So, you know, that also fueled my, my passion for all this because, you know, I was sick and I was trying to have a dance career, you know, and, and try running to the bathroom, you know, constantly <laughs> during a Imagine. ballet or modern dance class. You know, my, my body was, my media, my body was everything, you know? So um, I just really refused um, to let that, just keep down spiraling. And I really didn't, the, the side effects to the drugs were just a whole nother story as well. So yeah, that's what fueled my passion into um, leading to where I'm at today. And uh, yeah, then I, as I, as the story just unfolded, um, I 
discovered uh, what I kind of always knew to be true, and that's that IBD, Crohn's and colitis, has an infectious component. Um, it certainly has an autoimmune component as well, but science has discovered that that IBD, Crohn's and colitis, uh, specifically Crohn's, there's more of a correlation. Um, and that, hence why my book is called Wake Up to the Truth Behind Crohn's Disease, but a smaller percentage of the of UC patients with colitis also um, apply here. And um, so they discovered a bacteria called Mycobacterium avium pure tuberculosis, very specific, harder than heck to kill bacterium that's actually in our dairy supply. Pasteurization doesn't kill it, chlorine doesn't kill it, nothing kills it. Um, and uh, it's, causing, it's causing these problems. It's causing a disease in a very small amount of, of the population because uh, you have to have a genetic uh, mutation to be susceptible to the, the bacteria taking hold um, and not being eradicated out of the body. So this bacteria sets up shop and causes a lot of problems in a very small percentage of people. Um, so I wrote a book um, with a layman's interpretation of this information to really help spread awareness around this uh, because there just wasn't any of that. You know, the science was there, you know, all the studies were there, but the layperson just has no idea um, of this. And there's very few doctors in America yet <clears throat> willing to you know, recognize this infectious component and treat it accordingly. Um, so I'm just on a mission with Human Para um, and you know this handful of doctors to really help spread awareness around the, the root cause and the real cause around these diseases. What are specific products that you are your go-to's initially for these people? Sure. Um, yeah. Well, of course, it's different for everyone, um, but I do have some staples with with that I use clinically. With you know, love systemic formulas. Just love them. Um, you know, largely because I think it's important for me to state even why I'm so drawn to the line of systemic formulas, um, because I think it's it's unique to my background. Um, you know, my background is, you know, in oriental medicine, um, first and foremost, that's where I started, which led to, you know, functional medicine in a way more integrative approach. But, you know, Chinese medicine is just thousands of years old. And, um, you know, Chinese herbal medicine is just you know, just a, a very, um, the, whole, the whole system of Chinese medicine is just, is just incredibly um, profound and effective for so many things. Um, but, you know, Chinese medicine believes in, you know, in, in their um, herbal therapy, they believe in combining herbs in formulas. So they'll use anywhere from, you know, eight to 15 herbs in, a, a form, in any given formula. Um, and that's very different than, you know, Western herbalism. Um, Western herbalism often just says, you know, has take this herb for this condition and that herb for that condition. And it's, it, they often will just use herbs very individually. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. Um, that's just more Western herbalism, which has been around um, a much, you know, shorter amount of time than, than Chinese herbalism. Um, and so Chinese herbalism is just all about alchemy. Um, and it's just a very sophisticated approach, in my opinion, um, when it comes to plant medicine. And I was very drawn to systemic formulas when I got introduced to them because um, their formulas um, remind me so much of Chinese medicine in that way that the formulas are um, so well-rounded and so sophisticated in that they're often you know, combining um, most of systemic formulas combine, you know, herbs uh, with nutritional support. And so it's this combination of those and a combination of herbs um, with the nutritional piece. And, uh, and, and systemic formulas, uh, so the formulas often contain a, a lot of Chinese herbs specifically, um, which, you know, I was just incredibly drawn to as well. I mean, of course, not all of them, um, but some of them, and, and some herbs overlap, of course, between Western and, and uh, Eastern herbalism. Um, but yeah, so I was just, I'm just so impressed with the, the systemic formulas because of that. Um, so I think that was just important for me to, to put out there first. Um, and, you know, a lot of the, of course, formulas that I'm, that I use, that I'm drawn to with systemic formulas are specifically for digestion. 
Um, but of course, I've branched out a little and do use other ones as well. Um, but I do use, uh, you know, Bind and FumDx are some of my absolute staples in my practice. Um, you know, I, not only do I see, you know, people with Crohn's and colitis, that's probably about half of my um, practice, but, you know, the other half is, you know, IBS and SIBO and, you know, acid reflux and GERD and any other, you know, digestive symptom that you can dream up. Um, and often that falls, they fall under the umbrella category of IBS, you know, whatever that even means, really. Um, so, yeah, so BIND um, I use in, I would say, almost all of my IBS, you know, patients for sure. Um, and then some of my, my Crohn's and colitis patients. Um, and FungDX, absolutely, it's just a phenomenal antimicrobial. Um, and these people come in and they absolutely have, you know, microbes that we need to address. Um, you know, the bad guys are outweighing the good guys and we've got to get rid of some of the bad guys. And FungDX is such a, um, I just love that formula because it is a combination of many different, you know, antimicrobials. Um, and the, the blend there, I think, is once again where it's at. And, you know, FungDX absolutely cuts through the biofilm, um, which is just super important. And I think um, some antimicrobials I find are, are weak at cutting through the antimicro uh, cutting through the biofilms. And uh, I, the, you know, the design of FungDX just inherently addresses multiple things and I, I really appreciate that. And bind is a, you know, it just bind is an incredibly weak binder, a weak binder. It's an incredibly unique binder, sorry. <laughs> um, and I love that too. You know, when I first started practicing, I, uh, you know, coming from um, Chinese medicine that doesn't necessarily recognize binders per se. So when I got into functional medicine and started uh, being introduced to binders, I started just using, you know, binders, um, you know, soul components like just charcoal or just clay or just zeolite, things like that. Um, and when I found bind, I was just so impressed because it just had, it was just that, that, that alchemy piece again, you know, combining so many different things. Um, you know, it's got the charcoal, but it's got the actual, the apple fiber and apple pectin, and then it's got the, you know, the magnesium oxide in it to, because, you know, binders can be, you know, very constipating and it's a huge issue on, for a patient on a binder. Um, and so bind also contains the, the cascara sagrada and the magnesium oxide to, and the dandelion to, to help the detoxification process and the fulvic acid, you know, throw that in there to help bind and detoxify. So it's just this genius blend um, of things that I have found really effective in my practice. And it's my, absolutely my go-to now for a binding formula. Um, so that in combination with the Fung DX for a lot of patients is just a brilliant, brilliant combination. Um, for leaky gut, you know, um, I, I, of course, you know, don't throw every Crohn's or colitis patient on those, um, but some I do, but for my IBS, absolutely. And leaky gut, candida, all those, yes. When they made the activated charcoal or the super activated carbon as potent as it is, there was that concern of a potentially being constipating uh, for yeah. some people. And so that magnesium oxide is especially important amongst the other ingredients, like you mentioned, the cascara yeah. sagrada and dandelion and everything. We have a GI pathogen purge protocol where BIND is alongside FungDX, like you have been recommending. And there can be a couple of other products um, implemented. Uh, there's NZ is a proteolytic enzyme, which also helps with the biofilms. But I liked how you pointed out the FungDX is able to have that much of an impact on the biofilms. People often ask the question, how long would like a GI detox take um, before I move on to the next phase? Yeah, just gosh, it all depends, you know, on uh, so many factors, you know, once again, um, uh, if, they, they're, if they've taken a lot of drugs, it often takes longer, you know, because the more drugs and pharmaceuticals they've taken, the more the fungal infection or bacterial infection or parasitic infection is able to really take hold. Um, so 
that's a factor, you know, compliance with, you know, taking the supplements and diet is just huge, you know, um, but any, but that being said, um, I would say, you know, especially with my IBS patients, we can really make a lot of progress in 30 to 60 days for sure. Um, you know, sometimes absolutely longer, maybe three to four months or six months, but if these patients are compliant and is, but with diet, especially, and, um, you know, and they're, um, not dealing with a lot of other health issues, you know, comorbid issues, then, um, you know, 30 to 60 days, we can really see a lot of improvement, a lot of changes. And what are some of the other common issues that they're dealing with now that you just mentioned that, the comorbid issues that you mentioned? Well, you know, digestive issues in general, you know, usually if they're dealing with, you know, often if they're dealing with diarrhea, then they're often also dealing with gas and bloating, you know, or maybe they're also, that means they're dealing with nausea, or maybe that means, you know, that because of, of the issues that they're experiencing, maybe they're dealing with a lot of anxiety, you know, these often these patients are, are prone to, um, you know, anxiety uh, because of what they're experiencing, because they're uncomfortable and they're running to the bathroom back and forth and it's affecting their quality of life and it's affecting their job and it's affecting their relationships because they don't feel well. So, you know, um, I think when you're dealing with digestive issues, of course, the gut is the center of it all, right? And it just affects everything. Um, and so, you know, I, I mean, which leads me to some of the other formulas that I will use from systemic, you know, I will often use dream and calm um, because the nervous system is impacted, especially with the, you know, Crohn's and colitis, um, you know, community that I work with who either has a history of steroid use or they're on steroids or coming off of steroids while well, steroids cause just, you know, extreme anxiety. Um, and the IBS patients are often, you know, those, those go-getters, you know, that are um, multitaskers and just, you know, doing way too much and not sleeping well. So, um, you know, dream and calm, I will absolutely um, use in these cases, you know, dream I, for those who aren't sleeping, uh, you know, once again, I love the sophistication of this formula because it's not just you know, here's melatonin. It's, you know, here's a formula with melatonin and GABA and Kava Kava and valerian, um, and then throw in a, a bunch of supportive B vitamins. I mean, it just doesn't really get better than that, you know, to really help uh, support the neurotransmitters and, and, and the hormones, you know, to, uh, and, and so I'll use that. And sometimes in combination with Calm, um, if they need something to just help support during the day and not just sleep as well. Um, and so, you know, because Calm really can help balance um, that hormone, uh, the, the hormone imbalance that, you know, can often come with um, the history of steroid use or even just, you know, for those patients that are, you know, a lot of these people are drinking, you know, caffeine. And so <laughs> they're, what goes up must come down. And so you try to get them off the caffeine, um, but, uh, you know, calm can help either way, but it really balance out the, the neurotransmitters, the dopamine and the serotonin regulation. Um, and so, um, you know, often I'll put them on both of those formulas at once or um, just depending what their needs are, just one at a time. But I, I love that Systemic, you know, produces these, these really well-rounded, balanced formulas um, in combination with the, the digestive formulas um, because I can pull from, from all areas, you know, in the systemic line. And I love that. Do you find when you implement both of these formulas or one or the other, the calm and dream, that it helps sustain sleep throughout the night? Or is it more about helping them fall asleep if that's where these busy, productive people, they have their struggle? Or, or is it helping them kind of break through that waking up at three and having difficulty to fall back asleep? I think it's absolutely both, you know, absolutely both. Um, I, I love dream. I love calm too, but I love dream because, you know, a lot of people get really hung over from taking just melatonin or just valerian. It seems to have this, just, it's just a little too sedating. Uh. Um, and so the combination once again is just the beauty of that formula. And I get absolutely get feedback of both that they're able to not just fall asleep, but they're able to stay asleep. And, you know, that's just so important, you know, for our Krebs cycles and, and sanity. 
<laughs> you know, especially during these times. Um, so yeah, absolutely both. Yeah, it is such a, it can be such a vicious cycle, which is why people crave that caffeine. Yes. In excess in some ways. Yeah. Uh, a lot of athletes that I've known that get so hooked on the pre-workout blend to have that fixed so that they can have that buzz and the necessary energy for their workout because they're sleep deprived, the yeah. Krebs cycles off yeah. and amongst, amongst other things, you know, but, yeah. um, and then it's hard to get out of that because it's perpetuated and then they have a hard time falling asleep the next night or staying asleep. And Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're dealing with, you know, an epidemic of, you know, these abuse of these workout supplements, you know, and workout drinks. It's just doing crazy things to the nervous system and the adrenals, um, you know, and so um, even just not just athletes are drinking these things just for the energy piece. And so Dream and Calm just really help, just really help calm things down. <laughs> I love those formulas. Good. And specifically for your IBD patients or your SIBO patients, you'll often, that will often come up as an issue. Sleep is a, is Sleep, a common and symptom. And nervous system issues and, and hormonal issues, you know, calm really addresses um, the hormonal imbalance and really helps regulate the, and support, you know, dopamine and ser serotonin. And, you know, especially for my IBD community, anybody, any of them that have been on steroids, um, you know, um, long-term use of steroids, or actually even short-term use of steroids, especially long-term use of steroids, drastically impairs um, hormones. And so, you know, calm combined with, you know, femocrine for, you know, my women patients, you know, femocrine can really support the endocrine system um, for these people who have a history of, of steroid use, um, or just even that a woman in that, you know, the age range, the menopausal or premenopausal age range can really help um, support um, the hormone imbalance. Um, and so I love Femocrine for, uh, you know, um, and, and often this population, especially with the steroid use is dealing with, because of the hormone imbalance, they're dealing with things like you know, irregular, irregular menstruation issues and breast tenderness. And, um, so femocrine can really support, you know, the, the breast health as well as the um, help. I've, I've seen femocrine help regulate menstrual cycles. Um, and so I love combining for my women patients, I love combining femocrine with calm. It's a beautiful combination too. Well, so speaking yeah. of the, the hormonal balance that calm can bring about, and how much it helps balance the neurotransmitters. You combine that alongside femicrine for these female patients of yours. Very and much so. How much have you been able to see some better regulation for those who've had irregular or irregular cycles, uh, menstruation? Have you seen that kind of get shifted and back to normalization? I absolutely have. And you know, that brings me to I, I just remember that, you know, that my initial um, draw to femocrine, um, it was because, um, it has a Chinese herb in it that mm. Chinese or Chinese herbal medicine. It's one of their sort of, you know, claim to fame herbs. It's called Chai Hu in Chinese. Um, Buplorum is the Western uh, name for it. And femocrine has this and Buplorum Chai Hu is used in Chinese medicine to regulate, you know, um, women's cycles. And so I love this herb, love long history of a love affair with this, with this herb in Chinese herbal formulas. And uh, I, Femicrin has that in it combined with, you know, all the other stuff. Once again, the, just the alchemy and the design of these formulas is just everything. And so, yeah, I've absolutely seen it. Um, it's, it's helped me, you know, it might, and even, in, so I've personally, you know, experienced benefits from this formula and of course, many other systemic formulas, but yeah, I love this formula in combination with calm to, to help regulate menstrual issues and breast tenderness too. I've really seen, I've seen it really, you know, I specifically just have one case I'm remembering, um, just extreme breast tenderness and, um, combination of things, but absolutely femocrine. I really saw that 
um, diminish drastically. One yeah. of the additions that I think gets overlooked is the bacterial blend, the probiotic blend, the, uh, the most predominant flora in the urogenital tract. Uh, those particular strains of bacteria are in this formula along with the rest of the alchemy that you're speaking of. And I think that helps with the endocrine system to respond even better to the rest of the formula. Is although it has a pinkish purple label, it can also be applied to men. The dim, the indol 3 carbonyl, the broccoli concentrate, the chrysin, for those suffering from whether it be gynecomastia or estrogen gets elevated in men, the xenoestrogens, toxic estrogen metabolites, that can help bring all of that down and help to stabilize. Femicrin can also help. Um, uh, okay. But, but um, yeah, but aside from that though, femicrin I think is most predominantly used for women. I just like how you've been able to implement it in addition to these others you've talked about. Do you suggest that there's rotation? Do you like to kind of rotate through or do you, in some cases, use femicrin alongside or have, have your uh, clients use femicrin at the same time that they use fung DX and bind others? Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of them. You know, some of my more sensitive patients, we have to really go slow with supplements and, you know, try one at a time to see how, monitor the response and, you know, whatever. But my more robust, you know, with constitution patients, you know, absolutely. Cause I mean, femicrin is there's, you know um, it's just really supportive. And so I'm not concerned, um, you know, like I am with, you know maybe some products that have maybe slightly um, slightly more abrasive, you know, components to them. Um, I'm just not afraid of that at all with femicrin. It's just, it's just very supportive and there's nothing in it that I feel is um, threatening to, you know, the gut in, in any way for those sensitive yeah. patients. So yeah, I will use it often. So in addition to that, the L-gut formula, I noticed that you have used that as well for those with, that are struggling with tight junction, with their tight junctions of the duodenal wall. Yeah. Where have you found the L-gut to be useful? Yeah, those tight junctions, you know, so the L-gut, the glutamine, you know, that's in the L-gut. Um, I will often use that for my, um, you know, the IBS patients. Or, I mean, all of them are dealing with leaky gut, right? And so I will often bring in um, the L-gut um, in combination with the other ones. You know, it, it also, what I, I really like about L-gut is that it has quercetin in it. Hmm. And, um, you know, this population is often dealing with mast cell issues. You know, those mast cells are just, over firing. Um, and so whether or not they've come all the way to mast cell activation syndrome, these people are still, even if they haven't been you know, diagnosed with, with that, they're still dealing with a histamine overload often. And so the quercetin and L-gut combined with the L-glutamine and then combined with the berberine, which is just a wonderful antimicrobial, <clears throat> Once again, it's just such a great blend, um, you know, to, to deal with it, to help repair those tight junctions and to also address, you know, to, um, uh, to, the, to down-regulate the zonulin, you know, and the, the inflammation. And so love l -gut. use it all the time, particularly my IBS patients. You're also a user of G-cell and where does that come in, in your protocols? Yeah, well, detoxification is just a huge factor particularly with my IBD patients, with the Crohn's and the colitis patients, because we're trying to detox a very gnarly bacterial infection, you know, out of the body. And these people are very sick and often, you know, with very, very compromised methylation cycles. And so, um, you know, we bring the, uh, the glutathione with the G cell in to, to help increase and support the detox detoxification process, um, you know, not just from um, the digestive system itself, but from the blood and from the lymph system. Um, and so, you know, G cell is wonderful to use in combination with bind. Of course, you know, systemic actually offers that in the IDS kit, right? And so I, I often offer that kit to patients. Um, so yeah, I will use the G-cell 
um, especially in my with the IBD. Um, I mean, all of them, you know, the, the IBS, they're all dealing with such a soup of, um, you know, a bacterial or fungal or fungal or parasitic overload, right? Um, and so um, they need help often with, if, especially if they've been sick a long time and, you know, once again, like their, their detox pathways are just not optimal. Um, you know, so we bring in G-cell to upregulate that glutathione and help the detoxification process. You know, and it's unfortunately the uh, large uh, amount of, of the Western, you know, um, doctors don't necessarily recognize the detoxification piece in, you know, all these conditions and how impaired the methylation cycles can be, um, you know, and, you know, and then huge percentage of the people that are, that um, reach out to me are also dealing with, you know, biotoxin illness, you know, they're often simultaneously dealing with a Lyme infection or a mold, you know, mold toxicity. Um, and so it's just such a, uh, it's such a complex set of issues and all of it combined is so devastating to the body. And so the detoxification piece, the, you know, upregulating the um, glutathione with g cell and bio, for, for all of these conditions, this soup of, <laughs> is just crucial. It is indeed a soup of issues or so many issues and often yep. am asked what is the best Lyme protocol that systemic formulas has or what's the best anti-mold. It's usually a combination. There's usually a soup of all of the above. It's mold plus Lyme plus deficiency of glutathione plus methylate, poor methylation nutrition. Yeah. All combined in this big soup of issues, like you say. Yeah, specifically, you know, with um, just so many, so much of my pop the population I work with is, you know, you'll see Citrobacter and Klebsiella pneumonia again and again and again, Citrobacter and Klebsiella, along with many, many other things. But, um, you know, those those two, I just always see in labs together. And, uh, you know, I, I really think that the Fung DX and the Bind helps with with all of it, but you know, those two specifically. So I've seen those numbers come down in those with the Fung DX specifically in the bind. Is it common for your clients that are suffering with these issues and the soup of these issues that you've mentioned to be deficient in D3? Oh goodness. Deficient yes. in vitamin D. Is that a common occurrence? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I will put uh, you know, that's absolutely one of my staples uh, is the vitamin D and especially particularly the one that you guys offer, because once again, it's so well-rounded. It's, it's not just here's your vitamin D, but it's, of course, we need to put that K2 in there to make sure we're getting, you know, optimal absorption. And then you throw some L-carnitine in there and then you guys throw, I think it's, I think you put some magnesium and calcium in there. And then I believe there's some herbals in there for, um, for like supporting the liver and kidneys, right? So it's just once again, uh, over and over and over again, systemic just designs these, the, these formulas that I just love because they combine everything that we need. Um, you know, I mean, it, I, I've, I just have yet to see another vitamin D out there that has those things. You know, so by the, your vitamin D, systemic's vitamin D is the one that I'll use. And then, and then um, to top it all off, there's the liquid version at which, you know, I just love myself, um, you know, cause just sometimes just taking so many people just get tired of taking all these pills. Um, but, uh, you know, it's also because my more sensitive patients, um, they just respond better, better, better to liquid formulas um, because, you know, just less powders, less capsules, just seems to be gentler on the system. Um, so I use the liquid version of the vitamin D a lot. Um, yeah, and of course, these, I mean, with COVID, it's just, yes, you must take vitamin D. <laughs> yes, and zinc. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I, I will, I love the zinc, the zinc stop. Mm. I, I will often, uh, especially recently, because I was just reading so much on, um, you know, the benefits of zinc, particularly right now. And so I will often put them, the staples, foundational, just, you know, the vitamin D3 liquid and the zinc stop. And I know you have a zinc chelate as well. Um, 
but I love the Zinka stop and I love the convenience of those because they can actually just combine them, you know, in a little bit of water if they want to, or just under the tongue, whatever, but it's, they're easily, the Zinka stop is just so convenient. So Dr. Karen, C. colon is another formula that you also have implemented. Yeah, I just didn't want to forget that one because it, I use it, I, I use it all the time. Um, and, it's, okay. and I will often combine it with bind because it, you know, it's supporting peristalsis. And if we need that extra push for, um, you know, a bowel, to help supporting a bowel movement. And, uh, you know, it does a lot for the tissue as well. And it, you know, I've, I've really seen it help neutralize, um, you know, and the, the pH is so important in this population and it's got like baking soda in it. And it's like a mild laxative. I don't like to use things like Senna is so often used, things like that, that are just too harsh for the people that I work with. And so I just wanted to get that in there and not forget C. colon because I do use it all the time as a mild laxative. And at the same time, it's supporting the tissue, you know, in the bowels. Um, so I'll often combine that with bind. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah. Where can people find you if they're, if they want to learn more about what you've done? Yeah. Digestivewarrior.com digestivewarrior.com and my ebook is front and center on the page for anybody suffering from Crohn's or colitis or has a friend or loved one suffering and uh, just a it's just a you know a resource of information of everything to do with that and um, and the new science behind it and uh, yeah my history and background and everything is is you'll find there well, I'm confident that everybody will have a lot of golden nuggets to take home with them as a result of listening to this. And I hope so. Thank you. Yeah. So thanks again for all your time today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it.